Hi guys, uh, Shadow here coming to you live from my living room. I've been down with the sickness the past couple of days. I actually got COVID from work, uh, so I've been out sick and quarantining safely here in Chateau de Wolf. Uh, you know, that, that kind of sucks. I'm not able to get out and about and do my favorite things. I'm not able to go to work. I can't go out and, you know, go out to the shooting range or go out to restaurants or stores or what have you. Um, and so, going slightly stir-crazy in my house here, uh, I thought that we'd talk today about something that's near and dear to my heart, and I hope to uh, educate and inform you guys a little bit about it, and that's uh, firearms and firearms safety. So, this is the first video I've made in a very long time. Uh, it's a work in progress. I can't find any of my good cameras, so I'm using phones running Droid Cam OBS, uh, and hopefully, you know, we can make a series of these. I want to I wanna really focus on certain types of weapons platforms, certain rifles, certain pistols, things like that, um, and sort of answer the common questions, because I know for a lot of you, you've never actually seen some of these weapons platforms. Uh, it's just stuff you've seen on TV and, and movies, and, and in, in all honesty, TVs and movies are just not realistic in any way, shape, or form. Um, and so we have, you know, real weapons here. Uh, I am a Type 7 FFL. It means I'm a manufacturer, dealer of, of firearms. Um, I'm working on my special occupancy tax, which means I can deal with the big stuff, you know, suppressors, full autos, things like that. So I have a little bit of background in this. I'm a lifelong gun uh, enthusiast. I grew up with them. Um, I am a, a pre educated person when it comes to firearms laws. I'm no lawyer, so, you know, as always, nothing I'm going to say against you is legal advice. Um, plus, I am, of course, a giant talking dog uh, in a red shirt. So, let's get right into it. Okay, so, uh, one of the first questions that I had to answer right off the bat was, was I going to do this with first and pause? Um, maybe. Uh, we'll see. It just depends on what I have laying around here. Um, in theory, I could. There's a couple of things where I want to have the manual dexterity to be able to show you certain stuff uh, and point things out. So there may be certain videos we do with fursuit pause. There may be certain videos we do with full fursuit. Um, we do have my my fursuit over here sitting on the chair. So if we have to, you know, we can. We have we have ways and means. Um, so just jumping right into it here, we have of course our AR-15 platform. So this is a very standard. Uh, AR-15, you know, we have a 16-inch barrel on here, uh, standard uh, military-style grip, and then collapsible six-position buttstock back here. Um, these guys over here are magazines. Now, one thing I will point out up front, this is a personal pet peeve of mine, uh, pretty much everything that we're going to show you has magazines. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people refer to things as having clips. That's just, that's not the case. Um, the only thing that has a clip that I own is my M1 Grand, which is actually sitting back here. Uh, didn't quite see it there. Yeah, sitting in the corner there. So if you if you behave yourselves, we might do a video on the M1 uh, at some point. That's, that's a really cool rifle. Pretty much everything else has magazines. Now, uh, the AR-15 style platform can honestly come chambered in any any kind of different things. They do rifle calibers, they do carbine calibers, they do even pistol calibers in, in the uh, AR-15 platform. Mine in particular typically is chambered in what's called 5.56 by 45 millimeter. Now, what I have here is a 30 round magazine. These are legal in this state uh, of 5.56 by 45 millimeter ammunition. And I'm gonna take one off the magazine here just to show it to you. So that's how big it is, um, for reference, I don't really have anything here for reference. Uh, it has primer on the back there, the bullet in the front, and a metallic cartridge in the middle which contains smokeless powder. Um, that material is ignited, once the primer is detonated, the powder is ignited, it causes an expansion of gas, of hot gas, which forces the bullet out of the end of the cartridge into the barrel and down out the business end of the firearm. So, one of the things we're gonna point out right up front, safety is number one. So anytime we're working with a firearm, uh, we're gonna make sure that that is out of there. We don't wanna have live ammo anywhere on or around the vicinity 
uh, when we're working with the firearm. So we're going to go ahead and take a minute and get rid of that ammo. Okay, welcome back. We got rid of our ammo. We 86 that. Um, so we're working with a firearm that is completely unloaded. There's no ammo in the room for this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, by examining the firearm at a macro level and then work our way down to a micro level and talk about the individual parts and functions and how everything works. So again, taking a look at our AR-15 platform here, uh, there's two major components that comprise an AR-15. There's what's called an upper receiver and a lower receiver. Now, getting a little bit into FFL territory and law and, and, and firearms law and ATF regulations and things like that, uh, any firearm can only have one component that is the official firearm. On AR-15 style platforms, you're going to find that that's actually the lower receiver, which is this bottom section here, and actually also includes uh, the butt stock and buckle tube and pieces like that. The upper receiver is not technically a firearm uh, under ATF regulations and federal law or state law in most places, um, but it typically contains a lot of the things that, that make, make it go pew pew, right? So the upper receiver is going to be this section up here, as well as this and then the barrel and, and you know the business end there so that's defining what a firearm is right in terms of, of breaking it into individual uh, pieces but let's talk about what a firearm does all right so we've talked about what a firearm does um, and now we're going to talk about the individual components of the AR-15. Now, we're not going to get into a level that you guys are going to become professional gunsmiths overnight. There's just not enough time in, in the day for me to do that. We are going to talk about a couple of basic features and functions of the AR-15 platform. So we'll start at the far rear end, and we'll just work our way up to the front. So starting at the far back end, of course, we have our butt stock. This is the butt of the rifle. This is the portion that is going to go up against your shoulder when you're firing the rifle. Uh, in this particular case, and on many AR-15 platforms, the buttstock is collapsible, which means that that actually slides forward and back. Um, there's a lot of benefits to that. It just depends on the circumstances you're in, if you're doing close quarters combat or, or, or indoor shooting or things like that, where you need the maneuverability of a carbine or a smaller rifle. It really helps to get it closed up against the rifle. Uh, in, in actuality, it doesn't change the overall length of the rifle very much. It's a couple inches at most. Um, but it does give you, at, you know, that a little bit more room to handle it in a small space. Moving forward from the buttstock, uh, we have what's called the buffer tube. The buffer tube contains the buffer system. Um, we're not going to get into that. That's a little bit complicated. Uh, but that is the recoil system that causes the, the um, bolt carrier group to cycle back forward and, and chamber another round in the firearm. Again, we mentioned the lower receiver here. Um, ooh, it's zooming in. A little bit of that. We have, of course, our grip. We have our trigger. Our magazine release. You can see the rear and front takedown pins. We'll close that. It's a dust cover. Uh, and then, of course, we have a, some other stuff up here, which we'll get to in a bit. There's not a lot to the lower receiver, but that is the component of the rifle that's actually considered the firearm, quote-unquote. Uh, there's historical precedent for that. There's reasons. I'm not going to get into them tonight, but, but there's many reasons, many, many whys for that. Okay, so we've talked about the lower receiver. Now we're going to talk about the upper receiver, um, which is, of course, the other major part of the firearm. So, again, looking back at our AR-15 platform that we have, the upper receiver, as we mentioned, is going to be all this here and kind of draw a line through here and cut it off there. Um, and we'll take this apart so you guys will have a, have a chance to see this when we get here. Um, the AR-15's upper receiver consists of a couple parts inside. Obviously, we have our barrel down here. We have our uh, foregrip, uh, just depending on the type of rifle you have. That could look completely different than this. Um, this is a Delton upper. It's very cheap. It's one I found on the internet uh, for a couple hundred bucks back in the day. Um, this is an old rifle. It has a front sight. And then what it used to have would have been 
a M16A2 style rear sight. Now that looks like an M16. It like, looks like what you see in, in Hollywood on TV. Um, in this case, I took that off and put a uh, red dot sight on, the, uh, on a riser here because um, it looks cool. I don't use this rifle very much. Uh, it's mostly just a showpiece. Um, but moving down from there, you can see this sort of T-shaped thing right here. That's what's called your charging handle. Um, and the thing I mentioned earlier, the bolt carrier group, the charging handle grabs a hold of the bolt carrier group and pulls it back. That's what allows us to, to cycle around into the fire line. Next to the charging handle, you have what's called a forward assist. Uh, that's got a storied history behind it. It comes from this being designed based on a military rifle. Uh, the Army really wanted something that they could slap and make sure that the uh, bolt was in what's called in battery. Um, another you know, long history there. We're not going to get into that today either. Uh, I mentioned that there was a dust cover, which is right here. Uh, that just is designed to keep the dust out if you're in dusty or muddy conditions or someplace a bad land to stand that you, you know, you're going to get a lot of dirt and debris in there. Um, this triangle thing that points out here uh, is not on all rifles. It just happens to be on this upper receiver. That is just to help deflect brass. It's literally just called a brass deflector. Um, again, I mentioned these takedown pins. There's a front takedown pin and a rear takedown pin. Those hold everything together. Um, and then, of course, we'll flip it over here. And there's a couple more items uh, on here that we didn't talk about earlier on the lower receiver that we can now see better on this side. Um, and that is, of course, our bolt catch release right here. And, of course, our safety. Um, we'll go into great depth on those in a little bit. I'm going to do something terrible today. I'm going to use one hand and a paw and one hand that's not. I'm ruining the magic left and right here. So one of the things I want to demonstrate next is the safety mechanisms for an AR-15. Uh, in the strange event that you find one of these laying around in the field, God hope that this never happens. But if you do, uh, one of the most important things you can do is know how to render the rifle safe. So we have a rifle. Okay. Um, we mentioned the charging handle back here. We mentioned on the other side the lever safety and a couple other things. So what we're going to do in order to render this rifle safe is we are going to charge the rifle back with no magazine in the firearm. We're going to visually inspect the chamber to make sure that there is no cartridge in there, no, no uh, loaded rounds, no nothing like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that bolt carrier go forward and we're going to place the rifle on safe. Um, the AR-15 is kind of unique uh, among rifles. It can't be placed on safe if the firearm is not cocked. If the hammer is not cocked back on the rifle, it can't be placed on safe. So right now, um, there's no round in here, so I can't actually move this lever safely. So what we're going to do is we'll take our rifle and we're going to keep it pointed in a safe direction, which in this case is down at the floor. I'm going to pull that charging handle. We're going to visually inspect. We're going to look inside that breech. Make sure that there's nothing in there. We're going to let it go forward. And then we're going to flip that safety. And you can see that the safety's gone from the safe the fire position to the safe position. I preemptively heard somebody ask the question, but Shadow, that's not how I'm going to find an AR laying on the ground. There's likely going to be a magazine in it. Mea culpa, you are completely correct. It is likely that you will find a rifle on the ground with a magazine in it. Um, first off, if you're in some sort of situation and it's not your rifle, don't pick it up. It's not yours. Don't mess with it. Um, unless the situation calls for it, that there is an immediate threat to somebody else's life because of the weapon, there's a small child that's getting, grabbing a hold of the weapon or something, something completely crazy is happening. There's no reason for you to pick up somebody else's gun that could lead to a whole host of legal problems. But if you do encounter a situation where you need to render a firearm safe uh, in a crisis situation or some other, even just out at the range, you need to help somebody render their firearm safe. That's what I'm showing you this for.
um, you're correct, it's likely that you will find it with the magazine in the firearm. So, I have verified that this magazine is indeed empty. In fact, I'll show it to you here. Uh, you can see that there are no rounds in that magazine. We'll get to loading and unloading magazines later in another video. Um, in the event, we have our rifle here, right? The first thing we want to do is remove this magazine. To do that, there's a little button right here. We showed this earlier. Just depress that button, and the whole magazine comes out the bottom. That's it. That's all the more there is to it. Then, once we put our magazine safely aside, we're going to take our rifle, and we're going to repeat that action we did earlier. Pull back on the charging handle, visually inspect the breech and the cylinder to make sure that there's no cartridge in there, let it go forward, and then place the firearm on safe. That's it. All right, we've gone over the firearm, we've gone over the different components externally. Now one of the things I want to do is I want to take a look at the inside of the rifle. So what we're going to do is we're going to field strip this AR-15. Um, there's a couple different steps you can take to field strip an AR-15. There's different levels you can field strip it to. Uh, we are going to go just down to the basic first and second step here. We're going to remove the upper, remove the takedown pins and we're going to take the upper off of the lower just to be able to take things apart uh, and kind of take a look at them. So the first thing we're going to do is this rear takedown pin. It goes through the whole way to the other side. We're going to push that in with our feet. And you're going to see it just protrudes here slightly. We're going to pull it out. And I'll show it to you here sort of relief so you can see it. That is going to cause the whole lower receiver to pivot away. Which, as soon as we take our front pin, push it all the way through. Put a little bit of upward pressure on this. We can now separate our lower receiver from our upper receiver. So, remember what I said earlier, this lower receiver is actually what's considered the firearm. This whole thing is not considered a firearm. It can technically be purchased online. Okay, now that we have separated the upper receiver from the lower receiver, there's a couple more parts we're gonna take apart because I wanna show them to you guys. So, remember that charging handle we talked about up here, the T-shaped item? We're going to pull all the way back on that. See that piece that just came out with it? This one here? That's what's referred to as our bolt carrier group. We're going to pull that out gently. That, right there, it does uh, the vast majority of the work that the firearm needs to do. Uh, it contains things like the firing pin, uh, the bolt, the extractor, the bolt extractor pin, a whole bunch of other things in there. Um, yeah, firing pin, all kinds of cool things. This is our charging handle. That causes the bolt carrier to go all the way back or forward, depending on how you're There we go. That pulls back on the bolt carrier group and allows it to freely cycle when the rifle's firing. Inside your bolt carrier group, you have three major sections. You have down here, which we're not going to take apart, is your firing pin. You might be able to see it there. It's silver. It's on the inside. You have your bolt. And over here on this Side. can't hardly see it but you have the extractor this little tube that sticks up the top here that is part of your gas recoil system that's what actually causes the rifle to cycle and that's what causes it to eject a spent cartridge and come back and then the recoil spring causes it to come forward and strip a new round off of the magazine and load it into the fire room Again, holding up our upper receiver here, you can see our dust cover is still on here. Um, that will open automatically whenever the bolt comes back. Uh, inside of there, you can see, just pull that this way a little bit, you may be able to see that there is the breech uh, and then the starport and a couple other things in there. Um, these little holes that are on here is what mates with those pins. And then, of course, you can see our forward assist here, which doesn't do a whole lot when there's no bolt carrier group in there to, to assist.
Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to take a look at with our firearm is going to be how does the firearm cycle? How does it get old brass out and chamber new rounds for operation? Um, this differs on every gun. I've got 16 of them over here and they all behave differently. They all do something different. Um, on the AR-15 platform, it uses a gas impingement system uh, on that bolt. And what it does is it takes a little bit of that expanding hot gas when the bullet is going down the barrel and it cycles it up and back and pushes on the bolt carrier group right into that little port there and pushes it back. And that's it. That's all it does. It uses the hot gas going in the opposite direction to push the bolt back, which unlocks it, flings the old shell out, comes forward because of the buffer tube recoil spring, strips another round off, and loads it into uh, the breech. Inside of our upper receiver here, of course we got the business end, the muzzle, and then our uh, flash hider here, and you can put all kinds of crazy stuff on the end. Um, inside of this front post sight is actually a little thing called a gas block, and that gas block is a little itty bitty hole in the rifle, and the gas block lines up with that hole and pushes gas up and back so it goes up and then back along a tube it's called a gas tube um, and you can see a little bit of silver there inside that's actually the gas tube and it comes back to the back of the rifle into that bolt carrier group that sits inside of the rear end of the rifle and that's really it all right one more thing i want to talk about before we reassemble this rifle and get it put to bed for the night Certain rifles, uh, I mentioned that the AR platform could fire different rounds depending on how it's configured. Uh, in certain rifles, certain firearms in general, there are certain items that can shoot one or more calibers of ammunition. Now it's important that with any firearm that you own, that you only ever use the ammunition certified by the manufacturer uh, in terms of caliber, uh, weights, etc., things like that. Certain rifles, like the AR-15, can actually use different sizes of bullets, um, different calibers, depending on how, how things work. The AR-15 is one of those. Um, I mentioned earlier that the caliber is 5.56 by 45 millimeters. That's, that's what this bolt carrier group is designed for, that's what this barrel is designed for, uh, and that's what this firearm will generally run best. Is, 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO, NATO 5.56. You, you've heard it 50 million different ways from me now. Long, 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 long story short, uh, 5.56 millimeter by 45 millimeter has a civilian cousin, cousin called Remington 223, uh, which is a 223 caliber Remington round. It, it's functionally the same. Most rifles that utilize the 5.56 round can utilize the 223 round without too much issue. Um, always, always, always consult your manufacturer specifications and uh, owner's manual because it will tell you specifically what you can and can't use in your rifle. Um, for the most part, this can run. This rifle I own can run 5.56 or 223. I run them interchangeably. It just depends on what I have. The other cool thing about the AR platform is somebody decided, hey. The 22, the 223 caliber bullet, so 223, that's, that sounds pretty close to 22, right? 22 long rifle, huh? What if we put a 22 long rifle kit inside the rifle and let you shoot 22 with it? Uh, and that's exactly what this little doohickey does. This is called a drop-in 22 long rifle conversion kit. And all that does is it replaces the bolt carrier group with this little doohickey and converts it from running those big honking rounds to running little 22 rounds, which we'll get into in another video. Um, it makes it a lot more economical to shoot. It makes it a lot easier on your ears, especially if you got big giant ones like me uh, that are super sensitive. And it makes it a lot more fun because you don't spend $600 when you go out to the range. You spend 60. Uh, it used to be six. So. There's a lot of stuff like that out on the market. Um, your mileage may vary. Like I said, if you're not entirely confident with your firearm, 
I do not recommend swapping parts out. Uh, let a professional gunsmith do that. Um, okay, uh, one last thing we're going to touch on before we put this thing back together and put it away for the night uh, is just kind of taking another closer look at the lower receiver for the rifle. So, as I mentioned, we have a lower receiver. We're going to collapse our buttstock here the whole way. All right. On that lower receiver, we have the magazine well, which is here. You can see my fingers. Our trigger guard, our trigger, our rear grip. On this side, you can see we have our bolt catch release here. We have, of course, our manual thumb safety. Uh, in the position where it is parallel with the rifle is generally the safe position. We're going to get into why I don't like that word in a bit. Um, the other position, which is perpendicular or vertical, is going to be your fire position. Um, on certain on certain rifles, uh, if you go into the military or if you go and find somebody who just has that particular setup on their rifle, um, there's a third position. We can continue to push this further back uh, so that it was pointed towards the buttstock. That would be the position, you know, a lot of people refer to it as the fun switch. That would be your fully automatic or three round burst or two round burst or whatever your firearm is set up for. Um, I don't have that on this. This is just a standard issue. Uh, fire semi position switch here. Um, this is not fully automatic. Uh, AR-15s in general are not fully automatic. They are semi-automatic sporting rifles. Um, there's a whole bunch of components in here which we could get into. I mean, I could spend a whole day just on this lower receiver. But the main points I wanted to point out were, of course, that trigger, our magazine well, um, our safety, our bolt catch release. It, in here you can see this gold thing. That is our buffer weight. And you can hear that noise. That's the buffer spring. Uh, scraping inside of the buffer tube. That's what manages our recoil, that's what causes the gun to cycle back forward and chamber another round. If we didn't have that, we would shoot it once, it would fly back and it would stay open until we, I don't know, took a screwdriver and closed it or something. Inside of the fire control group pocket here, you can see that we have our hammer. And then underneath of that is the sear mechanism. Uh, the sear mechanism is really complicated. Uh, Basically, the bottom line up front with the sear mechanism is it causes the rifle to fire one shot and one shot only when you pull the trigger. That's called single shot. Is there, or in this case, because the rifle chambers another round, it is semi-automatic. Uh, on an M16 or an M4A1 or some other type of fully automatic rifle, uh, that sear mechanism would look completely different and would behave in a completely different way. But in this case, uh, the mechanism that we're looking for that specifically causes it to only fire one shot works like this. So we have a rifle, we're gonna shoot it. We're gonna pull the trigger. The hammer, which I'm holding with my finger here, is gonna come forward. It's gonna hit the firing pin, boom. The rifle's gonna cycle. It's gonna come back. Hear that clicking noise? That clicking noise is the hammer connecting with the sear disconnect. Now I'm gonna let my hand here and see the hammer's held back. It's held back by the sear. Now as soon as I let go, hear that click? That click is the hammer resetting itself to a position to enable it to be shot again. If you have your finger here on a semi-automatic, it is never, barring some freak accident, going to fire multiple shots with one pull of the trigger. That's actually the definition of a machine gun uh, under ATF regulations is that is that you fire multiple shots with a single action of the trigger mechanism. So we have it, we heard that reset again there. And that's about it. Alright, last things last. We're gonna reassemble this firearm. So first thing we need to do is take our upper receiver, our bolt carrier group and our charging handle. We're going to position the charging handle within the upper receiver. You may have to work it a little bit. There's the position that it goes to and that's the only position it fits in. There. 
Alright, we'll try that again on camera here. There's a position it goes to. Push the charging handle in and up. And you'll know when it freely slides in there like that. Now pull it out. And our bolt carrier group is going to go into the firearm. Now, you'll see here we have a bit of a problem. My bolt carrier group's off. Kill them. And that is because I am a dog and I can't see. So, we'll realign this properly. We'll get our bolt carrier group lined up the way it should be. And it should, if the stars are aligned and everybody's happy with everything in the world, drop into place. Just like that. Um, it's going to take you a few tries. Uh, to get used to that mechanism. Once you do, it'll be a cakewalk. It'll be no problem at all. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our lower receiver, mate it with our upper receiver, and push our front takedown pin in. That's going to give us this fancy Y configuration here. Now, making sure that our hammer is cocked back and the firearm's on safe, we're going to swing the lower receiver up and push that rear takedown pin in. That is going to give us our completely assembled AR-15 rifle. Now, we always function test our rifles. So what we're going to do is again checking it to make sure that the rifle is clear. It's clear. We're going to point it in a safe direction, take it off safe, squeeze the trigger with our other hand, cycle it again, bring it back, you remember that clicking noise that we mentioned on the lower receiver that we want to hear that sear engage? We just heard it. We want to make sure we hear that. What that tells us is that we're not going to have it crazily go full auto when we go out to the range uh, because that could hurt somebody, somebody could get injured or killed. And that is a properly function tested and reassembled AR-15 rifle. So we've taken apart our AR-15 rifle. Uh, we've examined the different parts, we've looked at the magazines, the bolt carrier groups, the ammo that's used in it, uh, the different components, things like that. Uh, it's the middle of the night here, so we're not going to have a chance to go out to the range and function test it and actually shoot it, but that'll come in a future video uh, if you guys want. So until then, stay safe, stay shooting. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, let me know, reach out to me. I'm, I, I love educating people on firearms and firearm safety. So anything I can do to help or to uh, increase your knowledge of firearms, let me know. I'm happy to, uh, happy to do it. So until then, have a great night. Bye.